Hello and welcome to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We're recording this on Sunday morning, John, February 5th, I guess now, 2023. I'm Larry Rhodes, or DJ Daughter 5, and as usual, we have our co-host Wombat on the line with us. Hello, Wombat. Hey, it's the Wombat. What's up? Uh, not a lot. Us at this early morning hour. Uh, with us today, we have Slew Foot. Welcome. Uh, and, and, we, and we have John Richards. Uh, Lucifer. But Lucifer? Oh, oh it's yeah. Lucifer. Okay. Yeah. Hard, to re- hard to read that on there. Digital Free Thought is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we'll also talk about religion, religious faiths, gods, holy books, and superstition. And if you get the feeling that you're the only non-believer in your town, well, you're just not. Here in Knoxville, in the middle of the Bible Belt, in the south of USA, we have a group of over a thousand of us. We're the Atheist Society of Knoxville, or ASK, and we'll tell you more about that after the mid-show break, so be sure to stick around. Wombat, what's our topic today? Chat GPT. The AI of all times have finally stumped the atheists, and we'll we will replay that in the. I uh, beg to disagree. Hey, we haven't even asked you the questions yet. <laughs> That's what the show is going to be for. But we we can place our bets now. So oh, okay. Christians get very excited because it's going to be thing, a interesting show. Good thing you guys got a Satanist here to bail you out. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say that because uh, in in the introduction. Mm. <laughs> um, Larry read through a whole list of things, but he missed out Satanism. I think that should be added. Yeah, we should put Satan in, in there. Yeah, yeah, we can put that in there too. You're in good company. Uh, speaking of which, though, since Dread Pirates out and we can't do a noodly invitation, we're going to go straight into my second mm. favorite thing, which is just catching up on everybody in 30 seconds or less. Go on, Slucifer. Go, go, go. All right. I've got a new podcast host. We've been working on new material right now. Uh, It's the Skeptical Satanist. We're on YouTube currently. Uh, Hopefully we'll be spreading out from there after we get our content and our shit together. Nice. You know, what's great is the thing about a podcast is it's like almost a time capsule slash diary. And I think it's a good way, particularly, and I'm going to say this in a weird way, but I don't think men get enough opportunities to just talk about things that are on their mind in a in a in a welcoming environment and i find it to be a very therapeutic experiment to just find friends that you like to talk with and engage with even if it's virtually where you just have a free space to openly speak i feel like a lot of times we don't have uh room to share kinds of thoughts like that my 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 two cents a lot of of disconnect in society in general Uh, absolutely absolutely (laughs) takes you a little bit out of an echo chamber and at least lets you engage with people and it's always valuable to be able to communicate rather than just the voices in your head regurgitating with each other uh i'm really happy about that where can we find the uh the podcast um i can share that link with you sure pull it up to us at the end of the show i want to hear the plugs for it sound okay yeah sweet sounds good doubter five your quest for living the life of every 13 year old's dream motorcycles oh. video games and space astronauts uh, what else have oh been no that i've been working i still work a 40 hour week so uh, i was retired for about a year and a half and then uh, this job came along and it sounded interesting so i took it but yeah i, I mainly play uh, star citizen now which is uh, a space game They're very interesting it's kind of buggy because it's an alpha release sure but uh boy what a game it's really something listen let me ask up, you Go ahead. I'll, I'll ask you this. Is there any AIs in the in the game right now? Well, there are a lot of bots. Uh, bots are AIs. They're rudimentary. Uh, you don't you don't actually converse with them. <laughs> you okay. change you exchange bullets with them sometimes. That's about it. Okay, okay, okay. Well, stay pay, stay, pay attention to the show. There's cool stuff coming up ahead. Cool. John Richards would love to hear about you and your quest for chaos overseas. <laughs> Well, I, I want to correct another error of omission that's happened already in this show, because you introduced Larry as uh, pursuing every 13-year-old's dream, which consisted of um, online games and something else I forget. But uh, it's a long time since I was 13. But I <laughs> I yours, was, think, yours was I whittling, think, whittling, wasn't it? I don't think that's a comprehensive list. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. 
I'm probably out of date myself. I probably did myself. It's like, I want to be on a Fortnite esports team, dad. It's like, oh, okay, that's what kids are into. Well, my, when I was 13, it was fishing. I was crazy about fishing. I don't do that much anymore. Nah, for me, when I was 12, I knew it was riding bicycles, and that was it, because there wasn't really, really an internet presence back then. So, Oh, no, it was, sure. It was about being outside and mine, with friends. Mine was spreading the love of Jesus everywhere Ooh. I went. Oh, poor kid. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. <laughs> most people don't. Most believers don't realize that atheists came from Wish religion. I was joking. <laughs> but no, and that's why we know religion so well. Oh, that's I so can't good. believe. I can't believe what I'm hearing. Didn't any of you Americans discover girls? <laughs> <laughs> now, now for that, you're talking to the round crowd. John Richards, what's going on with you, my friend? Well, I'm still plugging away with uh, Freethought Channel, and I'm happy to report that it's gaining subscribers at the rate of almost two a day. Well, that's <laughs> double than last time. Yes, yes, it's coming along very well. And we had a great uh, chat yesterday with an ex-evangelical South African. It's well worth watching. He's, tell, he's got a, a journey. He's been on a journey and he wants to tell us about it. And we spend an hour listening to him describing all the trials and tribulations that he's undergone. And luckily he's not being shunned very much. But anyway, I don't want to give away too many secrets of the, of the story. Free Thought Channel, that was Free Thought Hour. Very cool. Very cool. And mm. you've got another show coming up, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. And I hope you're going to join me in it, Ty. And I'm hoping that Dred will too. With the, I see he's not here with us today, which is uh, worrying because our numbers are down. You know, we have a panel show. Sure. Views on the news. And uh, sadly, one of our r regular stalwart panelists died the week before last. So we've lost him, Frank. Lavelle, who was um, a lovely fellow. Honestly, he came across on camera as a really adorable fellow. Anyway, we've lost him and we've got another member of our a regular panelist who's been invaded by relatives and, and a, a third one who is on vacation. So he's not going to be contactable. We normally have at least four people. I'm hoping you're going to be able to join us, Ty. I'm down. Great. Nice. Very, very cool. Yeah, absolutely. Thursday uh, will be there too. Oh, okay. Awesome. Okay, okay. It'll be a fun crowd. And then hopefully we'll be able to have Dread in. And maybe if you're short on panelists, you could download one. Have you ever thought about that, John Richards? Because we live in a world <laughs> now where if you have people that you want to talk to, all mm. you need is an internet connection and not people, but AI yeah. that can mm. happily have, in my opinion, some pretty really... Uh, uh, enlightening conversations with you in a, a polite and faster fashion than it would be with a human being where you have to wait for them to type where you don't have yeah, to see are, are, they, are they as good at segue as you oh yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, if we could find out i can ask chat gpt who's the ai that we're asking for is come up with 40 segues here's topic a here's topic b connect the two <laughs> let's see if they can do that anyway uh that's the topic for today's show i want to see if uh, an AI can ask questions that would stump atheists, including our resident say, Satanist who's on the show right now, Lucifer. Uh, I, I I reached out to ChatGPT, who's like this new uh, AI that's all the rave on the internet, um, produced by OpenAI, and they have uh, basically made a model for questions and answers of any sort. Uh, no text limits. Uh, feel free to use it as long as you want. And all they're doing is just gathering data to feed into a neural network that allows their model to be even more smart and more capable of answering questions in a polite fashion. There are some limitations on what it can answer. So for example, certain languages aren't available and it will make it clear that you can upload pictures. It's solely text in, text out. And uh, you can also ask questions about the nature of the, the process, but due to their regulations, they can't explain explain how many servers are available or how many elective requests there are and they will try to keep other questions asked by other users private as well but they do recommend that you don't give any of your personal information as well they do require your phone number to make an account which i don't necessarily like but i got phone numbers to burn so it's all good either way i logged in and i asked it please generate five detailed questions that would stump an atheist 
And I'd love to go over those answers or those questions with you and see if we can actually get some stumps. I'm going to go out with the first one. And as a disclaimer, when I ask this question, please give me five detailed questions that would stump an atheist. The model itself, uh, the, uh, uh, ChatGPT, said, hey, listen, as an AI language model, I do not have personal opinions or beliefs, but I can provide you with five philosophical questions that some people might find challenging to answer. And in my head, that's like, okay, you're an atheist too. Congratulations. <laughs> well, <laughs> I won't go that far. You want to go that far? He doesn't well, believe in a God no, or the, it doesn't believe those, in a God. I've seen the questions and it seems to me that they're asking the questions from a, a believer's point of view, like particularly the first one. So anyway, let's, are, let's go on into them. All right. All right. These are philosophical questions that were proposed most likely by believers in a philosophical sense, but yeah. it is reiterating that with a really nice disclaimer. Anyway, here's the first one. Uh, Larry, you're on the, you're on the, on the uh, chopping block today. First okay. question, how can the universe exist without a creator? Let's see. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Usually that's a question you get from believers or theists. Right. And uh, the thing about it is uh, the way they uh, frame it, is you know the the creator right. uh, would mean like a human or I mean uh, something with a, a mental ability to discern will uh, agency, but a, a creator could be another universe, could be a virtual particle, could be you know anything, uh, but they don't refer to you know virtual particles and other universes that way, or even nature uh, as creator. So that's why right. I think it, it has a theist bent. Yeah, so there's a little bend to it. And I agree. Um, when I Googled uh, questions that would stump atheists, almost all the questions that I got from like priests mm -hmm. were front loaded in that capacity. Mm -hmm. They were yeah, like, yeah. Um, right. they were just begging the question of a God or a relief. So it is a mm -hmm. little weird, but I would say for yeah. someone to ask me, how can a universe exist without a creator? It would require a better fundamental question of, well, how do we recognize a creation? Are we saying everything's a creation? Yeah, uh, yeah. These would be exactly. really good questions to like figure out before we get into the concept of yeah. answering a question that's begging an answer already. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. if we agree that everything's a creation, then we don't have grounds to recognize what things that aren't a creation are. So we don't have mm -hmm. a frame of reference. And if we're saying things can't exist without it being created, then there's no way to plead that the universe is also a creation because certain things can exist without it being necessarily created as well. So then the question would just be like, how did we determine this universe as a creation? And if we don't have grounds to determine that, then the better answer is we don't know if it's creation or not. But honestly, we could also just say it doesn't meet the criteria of something that would be designed because we have some hallmarks or rules for design. It doesn't seem like that's the case with what we know about design so far. Right. John Richards, what do you think? Well, who created the Grand Canyon? Well, there you go. That's that was my point. I was going to make is usually when theists pose this question, they started off with who, right, yeah. right, and yeah. just as, just what John Richards did, and exactly. that's a, a giveaway that they're trying to load the question yeah. uh, right in the direction of their answer, their preferred answer, right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And it's is it a really philosophical? Is it really a philosophical question that front loads uh, an answer? Or honest? Is it really an honest question? And it if can you... be used dishonestly. Absolutely, mm -hmm. I agree. So. Yeah. The questions you ask are important, though. I would love to see what Lucifer thinks on the subject. What do you think about the the question of uh, how did the universe get created without a creator? Is that the I mean, my question would be why? Well, I would ask a question back, I guess. Uh, why would there have to be a creator? Right. Why wouldn't the question just be how can the universe exist? Right. I, uh, where did it come from? I mean, right. that would be a simple right. question. Yeah. Uh, honest, open. Likewise, one of these questions, typically what they do is they, when, when presented to an atheist, they are meant to make the atheist seem afraid to just respond with, I don't know, so that they can fill in the gap with their own belief. Yeah. But mm -hmm. truly the right answer here could just be straight up, I don't know, or it see, appears to be natural consequences or natural forces. Well, who created natural forces? I don't know. Again, like, they're If you're proposing... Who? If you are proposing that there, you know who it is, now you have the burden of the evidence because I can yeah. easily demonstrate that I don't know how the universe is created it, without a creator. Yeah. So you are supplementing that with your own answer, and that's the part where you have to come up with evidence. Yeah. There's also something with that where it's like this idea that you're going to base things that we, you're going to 
base a, a claim off of things that we don't know rather than the things that we do know, which yes. just seems so backward to begin well, with. Well, it's right. argument from ignorance. Right. Like you, could, you could just you could Absolutely. make up anything at that point and right. say that, you know, Leprechaun. what we don't know. So right. And the sad truth of it is, I don't know, is actually the right answer when you don't know something. And right. We, as a society, get shunned from that correct answer. We're forced to raise our hand and come up with an answer. We're forced to mark a random multiple choice question if we don't know, just for the chance of being right. We are forced to respond to seem authoritative, to seem confident, to seem likable. But a lot of people don't like uncertainty. We don't like, and that's one of the reasons yeah. why religion is so popular. But uncertainty is a valid answer when you don't have defined variables. And yeah. as you learn more about the scientific method, you begin to appreciate things like undefined or undetermined or to be determined, because that's your area that of where you can place focus on in the future. That's where we can continue to move towards. Right. That's where, dis continue. where discoveries come from. Exactly. Say, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Find out. The trouble is religious people think that I don't know is a weak position. Right. It's right. not. It's just honest. It's an honest position. Exactly. Right. Exactly. So we got to know that difference. And we got to continue to be cha uh, champions and cheerleaders of I don't know when that is, in fact, the best answer, because it's yeah. not it's not a destination. It's the indication that you yeah. are you can move towards the, the truth. And yeah, that's yeah. The well, if, you, if, if you go back 200 years, there was a heck of a lot more we didn't know. Well, I, th I, I think <laughs> yeah. you're also going to kind of embarrass theists in that way because they've been given a book that they say has all of this knowledge. And this is Correct. everything you know, that we know. Correct. And this is the truth and everything. And then right. you're saying something that's outside of that. And it's if if the, it's either they're they aren't informed, you know, of this this thing or, yeah, their book was wrong. Right. There's nothing more uncomfortable than realizing that when you thought you knew something, you actually don't yeah. know something that's yeah, an yeah. acquired taste. But in my head, that's the indication of learning. Because what is learning aside from putting aside your own biases or your own gaps in knowledge with mm. new knowledge? And right. if you have an ego that's getting in the way of that, it's not in your best interest to maintain it. Get rid of that and continue to keep learning, yeah. keep stretching yourself, because that's what yeah, yeah. religion is stopping you from doing, yeah. reaching in, your in, best self. In fact, scientists quite like being wrong, because... That's the only thing that they can be certain about. Right. You can't be certain, you can't be certain about being right because tomorrow you might meet some sort of observation that is inconsistent with right. your your model. Right. But you can be certain about being wrong. Right. And so along with the idea that we should ask honest questions, I just want to give like a quick identification that when we use science as a way to resolve mysteries or unknowns, that is not a conclusive answer. It is a process. Science is a process that is good only in the fact that it's self-correcting, which means that it's always constantly questioning itself, questioning its methods, and trying to improve upon itself to get to a more correct answer the next day or the next hour, the next minute. And anyone can be a part of that if they are willing to ask meaningful and honest questions, which is why we talk about the first question and how it's framed and whether or not it's honest because that's the, how you get good answers by asking good questions. All right. That's our scientific, that would be our answer to number one. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> chat GPT. Okay. Uh, no one's stumped yet. All right. All right. Cool. Cool. Fair enough. Here's the next question. John Richards, you're on the, on the hot seat today. Are you ready? Ooh. If everything in the universe is determined by natural laws, how can human beings have free will? <laughs> well, again, we don't know. <laughs> Get used to it. Suck it up. We don't know. We're working on it. One day and, we, might, we might find out. And yeah. many prominent people say that we don't have free will. Yes, yes, indeed. They do. Th what I'm at, what I would ask is if this God knows everything, I mean, everything, he knows what you're going to do every step of the future that you have. And there's no mm. free will because you can't change what you do. Yeah. Yeah, you know I mean, that, but he would know what he's going to do for the rest of eternity. Yeah, right? technically, if he knows everything, then he has no free will. Mm. Mm. It's inconsistent between omnip omnipotence and omniscience. Oh, I was just I was going to bring up. I think it's kind of funny that uh, isn't it the devil that that created free will to begin with, according to their stories? Oh, my gosh. 
well, well, then if your answer was, well, the devil made it, would satisfy. That would satisfy. Mm-hmm. I'm wondering, um, what do people mean when they say free will? Because we can understand even in this podcast, yeah. we might have different definitions for the word belief. And so I have a definition of free will that is abiding by the natural laws of the universe. It is based on brain synapses and our chemistry and the things that we do in the past. It's not truly random, but it's good enough to where I can make a distinction between choosing to leave a restaurant and being dragged out of a restaurant by a waiter. One is a violation of my free will. The other one isn't. That's how I'm defining it in my head. And so other people may have different ways of describing it. And that's just a question of what do you mean by free will? And then maybe we can have the conversation afterwards. But for me... A uh, universe that's governed by natural laws is consistent with my experience of free will based on how I'm defining free will. So I don't necessarily have a problem with that. And I'd be happy to answer any more biochemical terms that are related to that. Or I've got, a, I've got a, a situation where I think there is no free will. It's when you're trying to discuss with your wife where you're going to go for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you, well, you have the illusion of free will. I don't think, I don't, I personally, I don't think that, uh, you can prove that free will is a thing like what Mm. i mean your environment could control a lot of what you might consider free will or whatever there's a there's a lot of restraints on that i think i I don't think that there's really any any evidence of that so sure and i i understand the idea of like free will being more of like a random truly inspirational transcendent thing that like inspires a body here in this meat space i don't believe in that kind of free will like my free will is very like cut and dry bolts and nuts and and same thing with my my personality like my personality is informed by the people i've met the places that i've been to the food that i eat the places that i go all that stuff so like my personality who i am my identity everything is all part of my day-to-day experiences or my legacy including Mm -hmm. what i choose to do and what i choose not to do and so i wrap that all into things that are based on the natural law because that's what i'm most impacted by because as far as i'm aware i'm not impacted by supernatural or transcendentalism or anything like that, or spiritualism. I have this world that I'm constantly fighting against its forces to stay alive. And that's what's going to shape me as well as what I choose to do. And I'm fine mm. with that because in my head, the the natural world is far more entertaining and complex than anything I could make up that's fictional or what appears to be fictional. Like as more as we understand how the, the actual natural world is, the more I'm realizing how beautiful and in, inherently complex and mm. and and just mind baffling co- uh, uh, levels of like why is this planet so small and the universe so big? What else is going on in here? This is crazy, and I'm not going to live enough long enough to see all of it, but I still get to see a little slice of it, and hopefully move our understanding a little bit, like a not even like enough to move the dial, but to help push that dial a little bit forward. That's so amazing to be a part of this time. That's what I'm saying. So like, yeah. it's a great time to be. Able- here. This is a rabbit hole. We could spend the whole show talking about whether libertarian free will is true or not. Sure, sure, sure. How about uh, we do one more and then we can get into our break. This one's for Slucifer. Slucifer, if there is no afterlife, what is the meaning of life? <laughs> <laughs> the here life. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I think yeah, all of these questions are pretty loaded. Um, but what I had, I had actually wrote something down while I was looking at that and, um, I'd put the environment you're born into determines, uh, it could determine your meaning or the possibilities for you, uh, to have some meaning in life. And from there, it's your choice then. Okay. Doubt or five. What do you think? Yeah, I, I back him up. It's whatever you want it to be. You can make your purpose, anything, and yeah. make it personal, make it family, make yeah. it business, anything you want. Sure. It's a question of whose meaning, again, the who mm-hmm. comes in. They want an agent to have imposed right. meaning mm-hmm. on his nonsense. Correct. Right. We make and, our own meaning. And I was, as I was alluding to earlier, I was saying, like, the idea that we are in basically a playground of physics that have been largely undiscovered, chemical reactions that have been undetermined, uh, matters of phenomena that's observable that we've only seen a very small slice of this is a very exciting time to trap to have meaningful questions that you can throw out at the universe and get reliable um, uh, unbelievably world-changing uh 
answers as a result. So like when we're figuring out stuff like this, when we're playing around with the AIs, when we're like coming up with new machines, all this stuff is very exciting to be a part of. And I find a lot of meaning through that, just contributing towards that effort and educating other people to have the same kind of mindset or curiosity to, to further engage our, our effort to, to push ourselves forward in this regard. So like, that's my meaning. That's where I get out of it. And I got that for myself. And next day it could be jelly beans, <laughs> you know, like it mm-hmm. could be whatever I want it to be. Right. What a, what a wonderful time. And what a wonderful opportunity it is to be able to choose your own meaning in life and not have it dictated to you. And, and it changes, it changes as your lives go along. Yes. You don't have to pick one out in childhood and follow it forever. Thank you. You know, the other thing to bring to this is that the perception that that question is coming from is one of human viewpoint, of human exceptionalism, of human chosenness. I mean, they never ask, yes. what is the meaning of a chimpanzee's life? <laughs> what, is, what is the meaning of an ape, of an ant's life? Or what is the meaning of a tapeworm's life? Mm-hmm. Right. They accept that those things do not have any extrinsic meaning. Wait a second. Are you saying humans that made a human god for for humanity might be biased towards humans? That's that's unheard. Uh, 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 yeah. All the more reason to worship a spaghetti monster. Doubter five, would you mind taking? Yeah. It? We'll come right back into it. Sure. Uh, 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 this Chat is GPT. the digital. What? Ask Chat GPT that question. Yeah. Cool. This is the digital free thought radio hour and W O Z O radio. 103.9 LPFM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. And we'll be right back after this short break. Hello, and welcome back to the second half of Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. I'm Doubter Five, and we're on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Let's take just a moment to talk about the Atheist Society of Knoxville. ASK was founded in 2002. We're in our 21st year, have over a thousand members, and we have weekly in-person meetings every Tuesday evening in Knoxville's Old City at Barley Staff Room and Pizzeria. Look for us inside at the high top table or if it's pretty weather outside on the deck. We also have a Tuesday evening Zoom meeting for those who don't like to get out or don't live in Knoxville. If you'd like to join us or email us for details at Ask an atheist at knoxvilleatheist.org or let's chat se at gmail.com. You can find us online on Facebook, meetup.com, or at our website at knoxvilleatheist.org. By the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you can still go to Meetup and do a search for an atheist group in your town. Don't find don't one. Find one. Start, Start one. one. That's right. Well, that where do you want to pick up? Guys, we have been asking ChatGPT, the latest AI craze on the internet, about what would be questions that would stump an atheist. And so we went over three of them so far. We got two more on the list. These are the top five questions that will stump an atheist. We haven't stumped an atheist yet, but we will. <laughs> we might with the next two. Doubter five, back on the hot seat. Question number four, ChatGPT wants you to know, if there is no inherent morality... How do we determine what is right and wrong? You mean apart from re- religion? Well, uh, harm. Harm comes to my mind. Well done. Anything that harms you or your fellow man philosophically, uh, financially, emotionally, physically, then those uh, you shouldn't do. What mm. do you need more than that? Matter of fact, we have whole books, whole libraries of books downtown here in Knoxville and every other major city in the world that were law books. They're, they're laws that are made up by secular individuals without the input of religion. Uh, there you go, whole, whole libraries of moral, moral codes without, right. a, without a God. John Richards, so, I'm gonna throw this out at you too. If there's no inherent morality, how do we determine what is right and wrong? Well, that's another begging question, isn't it? Because it's assuming that there right. is mm-hmm. an absolute Right. It or says wrong. if right. there is no inherent morality. I don't think I see the assumption in this one. This one, I think, right there was the assumption, though. Yeah, if I never, no, I never said that there was. Where would an inherent no reality come from? I'm, listen, here's the word specific. There could, there could absolutely there is, be inherent morality. But if there is no inherent morality, is the premise of the question, which is not an assumption or an argument that there is one. So if there is no inherent morality, how do we determine what is right or wrong? 
but well, they could have dropped the whole front part of that question. <laughs> <laughs> it's not pertinent to the answer. Yeah, indeed, because what you're doing, what they're doing there is they're taking a concept which is in mm. the conceptual realm, which we can conceive of because there's no limit to what we can conceive. I mean, I'm conceiving of Humpty Dumpty right now. Right. Yeah, yeah. And and they're they're taking this concept that there is a absolute right or wrong, and they're trying to apply it to the natural realm where things happen, where time progresses, where events occur. And in that realm, no absolute rightness or wrongness exists. Everything is contingent. We respond to events and judge them on every instance how to respond. And what might be right one day may not the next. For example, I won't go out and murder somebody, but sure. if, a, if a dying man in agony wants to be taken from his misery, I might help him. So hey, let me ask this then. Is there such a thing as inherent morality? And is that a point of umbrage? Like, would you guys argue that some atheists or anybody would argue, aside from religious, would argue that there is, in fact, such a thing called inherent morality? Well, th there you go, because inherent means um, hereditary uh, tradition is going, looking back as opposed to intrinsic, which means, you know, found inside. Mm -hmm. and, and I would contend, yes, there is inherent morality because we have all these traditions and they're all different. I mean, mm. in, in Islam, it's okay if a thief is caught to chop his hand off. I don't subscribe to that morality and I hope you don't. Lucifer, what do you have to throw into this? Uh, let me truncate the question for you. How do you determine what is right or wrong? Okay. Um, empathy would be one one means, I suppose. Okay. Uh, which is a lot of based off of, you know, what you wouldn't want done to yourself. You don't want that done to other people just because we have to all work together as a community and everything. We're a tribal type species and it's that's what it takes. People getting along. Um, so, I mean, there's there's empathy but that was actually my argument too for the inherent morality is that there are studies and everything that trace empathy like at near birth yeah that you're uh and so, compassion compassion yeah. for your fellow man so like that that was kind of where i was going with the uh i never said that there wasn't you know inherent right morality right, right, of that. right 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 yes yes there I, are, so there are. So I can support that too. I would say like biology has given us just through evolution yes. uh, a way to process um, scenarios where we can benefit by certain actions and mm. observe or model uh, a clear lack of a benefit if we don't partake in a particular action. So like if we had a bunch of people who said, you know what would be great if we all uh, pushed the person standing next to us off a cliff. Well, that society may not last as long as ones who decide not to do that. And so evolutionarily, we might sh shift out the people who like to cause harm to those who are nearby them and yeah. and and choose, inherently choose, or or through the system, prefer those that cooperate and work well together. And now we have a society where we largely have people that don't want to stab each other, which is great. And for those who do, we have to come up with a system because no true system that works on an evolutionary basis is designed perfectly. It's trial and error. So we have to come up with stop gaps when we have issues where things fall through the cracks. And we have to come up with punitive laws and, and make sure that they're justified measures and people who can be in charge of them, et cetera, a whole bunch of different stuff. So yes. when I hear morality, I do think there is an inherent morality. I think that does exist. So I wouldn't argue that there is such a thing as no inherent morality. However, I think there's well, higher standards of morality that we yeah. can work together on. And that I also believe that morality is very much like science, where it's a system. It's not a list of rules. It's not a list of edicts. It's a process that we have to continue to work with and understand what the exceptions are and what do we do when the rules are actually broken. Not just declared this is a wrong thing, but now that the wrong thing's done, how do we resolve it? It's a yeah. whole system of... Uh, consequences of actions and being aware of it and what we can do to build a, a better society that like doubter five says causes less needless harm because that's always the thing that we're trying to get rid of needless harm um, there's, there's two sorts of definitions being used here i think that what uh, theists mean by inherent morality is something that is imposed from above and has fitted in with the doctrine that they of their faith 
that they follow. Well now, if you want to define inherent morality as adaptations that we have evolved in order to succeed as a species by behaving socially and cooperatively, right. that's different. And mm. I don't, I accept that that's definitely the case. Mm. So, you know, my thing is, there's such a thing as like inherent counting. So like I can give my cat two hands one has three treats one has one treat and he's going to go for the one with three treats because he knows that's more than the one treat so there's yeah. like rudimentary counting or mathematics that animals can do where they understand values and they understand one has more than the other and stuff like that but math there are different standards for it and so a person who's studied and understood calculus or like linear algebra is doing a more advanced potentially more productive potentially more helpful version of math than what they may inherently know when they're born as a kid and so what i'm saying is we should aspire to that higher standards of morality that we can operate under or operate with that way we don't have to work on this subjective appreciation of each other and what our yeah. consequences imply on each other we can instead say here's the system that works Here's a system that we continue to improve upon. We don't have to worry about what our dictator says. This is yeah. the best way to do it. Let's try right. and let's work on this together because it yeah. clearly has the best results if you just look at their standard of society. Looking at this from an, an, an analogous to uh, computing mm. viewpoint, the hardware chips come with some preloaded software. It's part of their architecture. It, it enables them to work the way they work. BIOS, sub, hmm? BIOS, BIOS, right? Or yes, like, indeed. yeah, that's the word I'm seeking. Yes, and and then subsequently, software is added to that. Now we definitely come with preloaded uh, software, which we've evolved over thousands, possibly millions of years, right, in order to be successful. And subsequently, and, and this is where I think the difference is: those of a particular faith preference like bible bashers want to claim that they own morality right not this, not this base level that we are preloaded with right everyone because they realize hey let's just put an if you repeat a lie enough times with enough confidence then that becomes a new religion yeah, essentially yeah. right yeah. and so mm -hmm. that's what yeah. they're trying to pursue right. or five. Dred, dread has come in uh let's right. pose him the question welcome brett dread Doubter5, welcome to the show. We have questions presented to us by ChatGPT, the AI of note on the oh, internet. Perfect. I yes, asked yes, him, yes. please generate five detailed questions that would stump an atheist. We're currently on question number four. There has been no stumping as of yet, but I do want to hear what you think on this idea, which is, if there is no inherent morality, how do we determine what is right and wrong? How would you feel that answer? Well, I, I think I, I would go along with what you guys were saying, essentially that... Uh, uh, morality is uh, the sense of morality is something that's developed over time and uh, whereas morality used to be fixed with the idea of a creator absolute morality uh, I think is flawed mm. uh, and outdated uh, and certainly morality is developed in the secular world as a better response uh, to the world that we actually live in Right, as opposed to the one, the ideal one that uh, um, you know that might be uh, described in a Bible or something. You know what's weird is absolute morality is almost demonstrably wrong if you just look at how it's the punitive measures are conducted even today. So, like, if I injure a person, I can burn a goat. It's like, okay, I'll keep that in mind. Where can I find a goat again? Ah, dang it. Okay, well, if I can't find a goat, uh, yeah. let me just burn my three sheep. Uh, was it one cattle? And so it's just like people don't have that. And so who who yep. are the people that can be forgiven? Only the people who own land and property and livestock. And what about mm -hmm. all the people who don't have it? Like this yep. only works for a very segmented part of the world that even has those animals available to them and not for anybody else. It's a very weird system. And now we have a much more dangerous system where regardless of whatever you do, all you have to do is pray, think to you, God and ask for forgiveness and you will be forgiven. And right. it doesn't have any repercussions on the fact that you still have someone who may be injured or insulted or offended. You don't have to go out of your way to make apologies or amendments to them. You can just think in your head and feel good about yourself, which is a dangerous feedback loop because it's not training you how to interact with society. It's only training no, you to feel good about the best friend that you think you have in your head that created the universe. That's a bad situation yeah. for more people to believe in. Yeah, and, and I would say that, uh, you know, anyone that that would contend that morality should 
be absolute and based on what God's will is uh, defeating themselves by virtue of the fact that, you know, in the Old Testament, uh, burning, you know, burning uh, animal sacrifices, that was a moral thing to do. Mm. And uh, it is no longer, it, it can be agreed. I'm certain that nobody's doing animal sacrifices anymore, generally speaking. Mm. So if the morality of God can change, then it's not absolute by right. virtue of, of that fact. So, um, yeah, I think uh, I, I would agree with everyone that um, that uh, the secular version of morality is the one that works and it and it improves. It's like a, it's even like self awareness. I mean, it's it's a scalable thing. Yeah. And as we grow and develop as a species, our understanding of ourselves and our place in the world increases and changes and our morality has to slide along that scale yeah uh, in order to accommodate those changes what do you think john i've lived long enough to see morality change nice we used to back in my young days in this country here we we used to be pretty severely homophobic misogynistic you know in, in fact i watched a movie the other day about um Turing, Alan Turing, who uh, was right. a homosexual. And yeah. at that time, he was punished, demonized, and eventually committed suicide right. because society was strongly against that sort of uh, lifestyle. In and, spite of all his contributions. Yes, indeed. Yes, it's shameful. Right. But, right. but now, fortunately, we've moved and we're much less homophobic, much less misogynistic. We've improved. Our morality has got better. Yeah. Yep. And the thing about uh, what Dred was saying about it, uh, the problem with basing it on God's word is God's word is, I mean, the Bible, th theoretically, or the Quran, and that is interpreted 16 different ways by, by different sects uh, and segments of, re of yep. religion. I mean, some of them still demonize uh, homosexuality you know, yes, yes. because of what it says in uh in the Bible, but some yeah. of them look at what uh, Jesus said and say, no, we need to love our neighbor no matter what they do, yeah. but they still consider it a sin. So it's just, yeah. you know, you can't, there's no definitive word when the, when the Bible is basically a Rorschach test. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Indeed. Can I bring an, an up to date on this? Because in Australia, there has been a large church called the Anglican Church, you know, it's a branch of the C of E, the one that's based here. Mm -hmm. and, and recently it's become two. <laughs> it's split because there's two factions now. The traditionalists don't want to marry gays and the progressives are accepting the idea of marrying gays. Yeah. So, yeah. so the traditionalists hived off and formed a, a separate version of the... And Austin you know, they, they both have scripture to back up how they believe yes. about it. Yes. So I would say this is the model morality for Christianity is based on there are points to get you towards the good afterlife. And there's also points to get you to the bad afterlife. And mm. if you don't have a concept of an afterlife, if you don't believe in hell, then mm. everything that you do could be wrong and you don't care because they're all points at the end of the day. Whereas mm. if you're Christian, you have a very clear idea of mm. wrong means sin and that mm. tends me to the bad place, whereas good means blessings and I get to the good place. So like Ooh. the idea of morality is like, are you with this system or not? Do you believe in an afterlife? Yes. Do you fear yes. God? Do you believe in a God that loves you and wants that relationship with you? Yes. It's uh, hand in loyal? hand with the two. <clears throat> and we yes. as atheists can easily segment them and talk about secular morality and like these abstracts ethics, you know, like this yeah. uh, empir empiricism, if you will. But yes. that's not fundamentally how christians see morality because it's hand in hand with their their belief system i yeah, wonder so about, go ahead can i can i just respond yeah, yeah. to that yeah, yeah yeah it's all about being loyal to your tribe in a religion mm -hmm. that's the primary consideration but it's interesting because the pope has recently announced that he doesn't think homosexuality is a crime but it is a sin right <laughs> and oh i have problems with that still because it 
I got, uh, there's a lot of problems I got with the Pope either way, but like, you, you, know, <laughs> you point a finger, you got four pointing back at yourself, but it also like, anyway, didn't want to get too distracted. I want to ask, I want Lucifer to get a chance to get into this. I, I love the name, Lucifer. <laughs> I was awesome. wondering, I was well, wondering is there a possibility now that if you were to bridge the gap between true empiricism and and what a Christian believes morality is and say, listen, maybe it's the role model that you're looking at. Because when you have God telling you what's right and wrong, you might be doing a lot of wrong things that still lead to harm. Whereas if you look at the devil, if you look at Satan, here's right. an example of a guy who never gets offended. Like Skepticism oh. versus faith. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Like, just look at this book and just pick a different role model that's also supernatural, who seems to be in better control of what they... My best story for why Satan is more moral than God is the story where Jesus is on a mount. He hiked up to a top of a mountain. The devil comes to him and he's like, hey, listen, if you worship me, uh, you don't have to do this fasting thing that you're doing. I'll give you food and you, get, you can be worshiping all that stuff. Like, would that be happy? And Jesus is like, stay away from me, Satan. You'll never test me. And Satan's like, Okay, so you don't want to worship me? That's fine. See you later. <laughs> doesn't doesn't harass him. There's no. I'm gonna send you to the bad place. I'm gonna spite you. It's all just super cool. I wish more gods or more beings in the Bible were like Satan. Like why couldn't yeah. it just be a yes certainly, or no check mark? The noodly one is that way. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> even, get the 30, even get the thirty day God That's back here. <laughs> well, like I like I said earlier, it, it's awfully funny that they have such, uh, you know, they look at the devil in such a way whenever they love free will so much. Right. It's, if it wasn't for him, he was the one going against God and created the other. So that's that's their their free will, supposedly, that they have to choose between those things or <laughs> 10,000 percent the bible strikes me as if like trump wrote a book about how awesome he was and there was like mm -hmm. a secretary in the back being like i don't think you should push the bomb china button and yeah. he's like oh i'm gonna make you the bad guy in my book and everyone's like <laughs> that guy was the bad guy it's like no trump's the bad guy he's the bad guy throughout this this uh -huh. is the book written by a jerk you should know that it's right up there uh i'm gonna go through one last question before we're done with the end of the show this one's open to everybody actually let's throw it up to dread because you just got in here dread i got a question to you from chat gpt this is the last question last opportunity to stump an atheist here we go question number five how do we account for the subjective experiences of love beauty and pleasure if there is no transcendent reality We are our bodies. I mean, that's, I don't know. I don't know. Is that, I don't even know if that's a valid question. <laughs> it fits the theme of today's show. Uh, um, I've been staring at that question this whole time yeah, on um, the screen. Each time you see me looking, that's what I've been staring yeah. at and trying to figure yeah. out what, what a transcendent. Right. And why does there have to be one? A right. transcendent reality. I guess. What, what is I, it even? Like, right. I'm trying to. <laughs> Are so you... here, here's the thing. My, unlike you guys, my, my, uh, my question would be for the first half of the question, which is how do we account for subjective experiences subjectively, right? Yes, like that's it's, what I say. That's we are our bodies. I mean, how? Else, yeah. How else yeah would you like me to? Yeah. Would you like me to explain <laughs> my subjective experience? Because it may not be the same as anyone else's, but right. I can try right. my best to explain exactly. it to you. Because it's yeah. inherently my experience. And, like, and it's about it. it's it's a, one follows the other fall, fallacy. I mean, yeah, show yeah, me yeah. that they would have a dependency on each other. Mm. I mean, well, you're just assuming it. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Yeah. Correlation, not causation, right? Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. like uh, yeah post hoc ergo propter hoc. Mm -hmm. John Richards, what do we got? Well, all of these things, supernature, afterlife, transcendence. Multiverse. Yeah, yeah. Multiverse they're, simulation they're theory, all, yep. they're, they're all undemonstrated. Mm. These are all fallacies, potentially that are being used in an attempt to bolster up the first fallacy that there is a God, you know, the first error. So, so this is an ad hoc fallacy. This is saying, I can't justify my original yeah. claim, but here's another claim. <laughs> that you may, yeah. But here's the problem. Well, you know, here, th this is what it is. It's turtles all the way down. <laughs> right. Yeah. But here's my problem. We can account for our subjective experiences just by virtue of the fact that they are subjective and we are experiencing them. I don't like tautologies. I don't really don't like tautologies, but it's like one of those things where it's like, explain to me, give me an opinionated answer about why you have opinions. I'm like, I'm going to give you my opinion on it. It's like, I don't like, it's like, that's, a, you just literally asked me for a circle. You can't tell what my subjective experiences based on like the same 
prompt or maybe the same uh, stimulation or 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 uh, situation that John Riches might have because we're different people, different places in the world, and we will give you different answers. But if this is an open question where we can explain how we feel about things, I'll be happy to explain to you my ideas on love and thoughts and stuff like that. But just know that there's going to be no true objective answer because it's inherently my subjective experience. Yeah. I don't need a transcendent reality to supplicate that or supplement that in any degree. Mm -hmm. Some people might feel like they do, but however, that doesn't demonstrate that that's actually a real thing, even yeah. if people point right. to it. Whereas uh -huh. for the things that I present, I would say I, you can, for the... For the conditions of my subjective experience, you can test them, you can observe them, and I can, as an authority of the person having them, at least verify those things, and I'd be happy to 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 clarify any of those points. Whereas someone who says, "Well, I know it's true because my transcendent God," it's like, well, that still doesn't prove that the transcendent God exists. That's just right now an opinion. That's just a claim, See, right? Uh -huh. Based and on the same phenomena that I'm using to come up with conclusions. I, which I is feel like those are two different like how how do you put those two things even in the same question because you're asking about some transcendent reality not giving mm. a definition of it mm. and then expecting the other person to fill that in for you like it's so yeah. weird and then you go but like how do we account for the subjective experience of love beauty and play? well we can all agree that those things exist like we're all and if you want to get into the pleasure thing, I mean, there's plenty of kinks and things, you know, so I'd say that Man, you know, my brain didn't even go there, but we, sure, we no, pretty okay. well mm -hmm. uh, kind of, yeah, we can, mm -hmm. we can prove those things in a way. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like, how can we have pots of gold without leprechauns? Yeah. <laughs> right. But from the Christian perspective, it's credence to yeah. demonstrate that their God exists. And the, in the way that is, and this is a devil's advocate, sorry, Lucifer, I know you hate that. Uh, but I was saying, if I have a feeling of love, and my opinion is that that's coming to me from a transcendent reality, then that's proof that I can experience of that transcendent reality. And if other people who I believe in, other people who are my leaders, they say that this came from transcendent reality, I can assume that my feeling is the same as their feeling, which gives me even more credence that this source is a real source and not just something that atheists say doesn't exist but is actually a thing that does exist that I'm experiencing on a regular basis. It's one of those weird um, uh, reprogramming steps that happen when you become indoctrinated, where you don't have a way to assess the, the reasons why you believe things. So you believe other people who rewire you and basically say, hey, this correlation is now a causation. And that's going to be the, the credence for your evidence. It feels just as real as being angry at a spy balloon that may not necessarily be a spy balloon or like or <laughs> I, I mean or I, also, that you. You, I, I also have to wonder how do they account for subjective experiences whenever they claim that god controls all of these things batter five what do you got if i'm not was, sure i understand what he means by that oh subjective ahead. how can we have subjective if experiences that without if that god? was yeah, if that was yeah. from a Christian's perspective, that would be my question back to them is how do we, so how do they account for that, sub, these subjective experiences of love, beauty, and pleasure and all of that whenever they say that, well, I guess they'd go to free will probably, huh? Probably. Mm. I mean, there's all kinds of subjective experiences in the Bible and the God exists in the Bible as well. I don't really say that, say that they're dependent on each other okay. or not dependent. Guys, Great answers to all the questions on the show. We may ask Chat GPT to come up with some more uh, detailed questions to stump us in the future. We ought to figure out a way to get it on the show. <laughs> <laughs> you, Guys, you can next, week, next you week, can. I'll, I'll make a better effort to be here in the morning so I can give the benediction. But no sweat. I did actually question Chat GPT to come up with a Pastafarian uh, song. Nice. And so nice. I would like to share that next week with you guys. Great. Cool. We're wrapping up. We're wrapping up for now. Slucifer, what's that YouTube channel? Oh, I got the link up. It's the Skeptical Satanist 8656. Yep. Nice. Very cool. The skeptical cool. Satanist? The Skeptical yeah. Satanist Sweet. 8656. Dread Pirate okay. Higgs, where can we find your stuff at? I'm on uh, YouTube at Mind Pirate, M I N D P P Y R A T E. And uh, I live stream this at uh, 7 a.m. PST on Sunday mornings. And then also try to join uh, the 
the views on the news with John Richards oh. at 11 a.m. today. Yeah. Not today? I hope you're oh. going to join today. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll be there. Right. Okay. right. Yeah, we'll be with you. John Richards, where yeah. can we find your stuff at? Free Thought Channel. It's all on there. I've been doing lots of three minute videos and they cover much of what we've been talking about today. Nice. But here's nice. an idea. I would like to, I don't know whether we can do this through a, a, a Facebook group or something, but I'd like to poll Christians asking them, A, whether they believe in God and B, whether they believe in the devil. And I'd like to find out if there's any difference and if so, how much? Interesting. That or five, where can we find your stuff at? Well, where do we find your stuff? You're skipping over yourself. Uh, you're probably watching it. I'm on Let's Chat. It's YouTube. What's uh, up? Hey, everybody. Uh, okay. Well, my content can be found at digitalfreethought.com. My book, thank you, Jed, is what Atheism, What's It All About? Available on Amazon. Uh, be sure when you go to digitalfreethought.com to click on the blog button for a radio show archives, atheist songs, and articles on the subject of atheism. Remember, everybody is going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life. And we'll see you next Wednesday night at 7 o'clock on WOZO Radio. Say bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. -bye.